inform the public that a team of detectives from the Special Investigations Division at the Directorate of Criminal Investigations has arrested Joseph Carblater, a self-styled pastor, and put him under custody. He has been apprehended because of offensive communication against the person of the president. According to preliminary information, the writer repeatedly posted grossly offensive messages under uh, the Joseph Cabletta weekly rant returns, referring to the fountain of honor as a gambler, thief, and liar. Section 25 of the Computer Misuse Act 2011 criminalizes such acts of communication. We once again want to caution all those who glorify such communication, particularly through social media, that though it's public space, it is not protected. Therefore, any postings or false fabrications will attract punishment in accordance with the laws. The public is further advised to think first about what they say on social media, as the joint forces will continue using their acquired capabilities to monitor comments on social media and any offenders will be investigated and punished. Right now, investigations into the conduct of Joseph Cabaleta are ongoing and more information will be availed as investigations unfold. Now, uh, Joseph Cabaleta joins a long list of others that have been apprehended for, uh, uh, mis uh, for the Computer Misuse Act and offending the first family, but as well using social media or new media to communicate things that have been deemed as offensive. Dr. Steda Nyanz is on the same case, Abadjo events, and so many others. So to better understand this one, we are going to have a topic concerning freedom of expression in Uganda, but as well we want to clearly understand encroaching on peace of the president, what it actually means, and to better understand this today and for the discussion on freedom of expression, I'm joined by a friend, a lawyer in town, uh, Council Simon Senyonga. Good morning, Good Simon. Good morning, Stephen. How are you? I am very well. How are you doing? How is the business of law? Um, uh, it is moving on well. I usually tell people that the world is because journalists are. We are the informed friends. Mm, okay. <laughs> Amazing. And we are the land ones, eh? We are the land ones. <laughs> so that is the discussion. But let's talk freedom of expression. Yes. You know, freedom of expression is actually uh, break, broken down into various aspects. Yes. That is the personal freedom of expression, but as well the public. Yes. So personal, it could be the interpersonal. You communicate with yourself mm. or talking with a friend, just like we are sharing. Uh, a little bit, maybe off air. Yes. Now public. To what extent should we uh, regulate the public mm. expression? Maybe to guide the public, um, mm. just, I can just build a legal foundation of the whole discussion. The freedom of expression is a fundamental human right which is provided for under the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda under Article 29 of the Constitution. Now this is found under Chapter 4 of the Constitution which stipulates the fundamental human rights mm. and also states the limitations. Now the basis of the freedom of expression in Uganda is not only founded on the Constitution but also on uh, the international legal framework to which Uganda um, is a part of. Um, specifically the Universal Declaration on Human Rights and the International Convention on Civil and Political Rights, specifically Article 19, which uh, um, states the freedom of um, expression. Now, to what extent should we limit this right? Exactly. Um, under Article 29, this right is provided for. However, in law there's something called um, absolute and non-absolute rights. Now the freedom of expression is not an absolute freedom right, an absolute human right, meaning that it can be limited. And uh, this limitation is provided for again under the ambits of the law. When you read uh, Article 43 of the 1995 Constitution of the Republic of Uganda, it states that human rights can be limited, basically for the sake of controlling public order and where the limitation um, is, access, is uh, demonstrably justifiable in a free and democratic state. The extent of limitation is legal. Um, Uganda being a party to the international laws, number one, that's one branch of the argument. Um, under the International Commission on Civil and Political Rights, Article 19, this right can be limited. Now, the Siracusa principles on the limitation of rights, fundamental human rights, under the International Commission on Civil and Political Rights, states that 
it explains what it means to be a limitation to be demonstrably just to be um, to be acceptable in a demonstrably justifiable democratic state. Number one, when you're limiting a human right, you look at the state. Is it a democratic state like Uganda? Meaning that are we, there open? We, we are dem democratic, I must say. Um, um, so to say, well, it's a, it's quite a, a subjective argument based on who is making the argument. But you see, there is open civic space, meaning that people can express themselves. The other thing is that the right to internet access is a fundamental human right. Now, internet access includes expression on the internet. Number two, the other law that has been considered, especially by the government of Uganda, when limiting, is the Budapest Convention mm. on Cybercrime, which again is an international legal framework to come to guide um, the nature of conversation on cyber spaces. Um, this beyond the law to help the person, the common person who is viewing us, these laws ought to be tested, and they have been tested in the courts of law. When you go to the courts of law, you go with an argument that you know a right has been violated and the court will test and see whether or not it has been violated. Now, I will just cite one leading case which has, been, which has shaped the jurisprudence um, in Uganda, which is the case of Charles Onyango Obo and Andrew Mwenda versus um, the Attorney General. And in that case, um, the Supreme Court, specifically the judgment of uh, um, the late Justice Mulenga, clearly stated that uh, it is the fundamental human right which is fundamental, not the limitation. Now he was citing a Tanzanian case of um, Reverend Christopher Mitikila versus Attorney General, the judgment of Justice Luga Kingira. And uh, again, they go ahead to state that uh, the freedom of expression is the key tenant in a democratic state. It is the foundation of the people to express themselves. Now, it ought to be extremely guarded because it's deeply entrenched in the Constitution. So for any limitation to be justifiable, you look at the case law it has been applied, and we have a leading case which has protected this human right. You look at the applicability of the international law and our responsibility as a state at the international platform because Uganda is not an independent island. There are international legal obligations. Again, Uganda exists on a broader East African regional block. Now, uh, moving towards East African integration, you are all to realize that you have to protect fundamental human rights. Now, as we're getting there, I want us to understand it at, the, uh, understand it at a layman's understanding. Yes. This is the reason that was given by police, that as much as we have uh, cited all those many laws and protections that are given to us by Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the mm. Casa Principle, mm. and so much, yes. the question, police says that as much as these are free spaces, that's say the internet and everywhere, mm. they must be regulated. And mm. they say that they are protected, but as well they are monitoring them. Mm. They are saying they are, uh, let's give an example of Joseph Cavalete, a self-styled mm. pastor, mm. who they say that this person uses the, uh, his runs to uh, uh, demean the person of the president, mm. uh, labeling him as uh, a thief, mm. as a liar, and as so a much. Gambler. Yeah. And uh, as a gambler. Yes. And they say that can never happen in Uganda. Mm. Fountain of Honor, Senyonga, this is the person you're talking about. Yes. Where does the protection of these laws mm. Will these laws protect mm. uh, Joseph Kabulita or if he really exceeded the limit of the I think, number one, the laws provide for an explicit human right to express yourself. Now, again, there's been a plethora of legal jurisprudence which has stated that actually the freedom of expression includes expressing yourself in a way that can annoy another individual. Now, um, about the question of annoying the person of the president, mm. obviously, um, many of it, uh, the, the people who seek to impose it look at uh, the Penal Code Act. But you have to understand that the Penal Code Act, what it provides for is not necessarily what is being stated right now. Because the way, what, uh, the, 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 the ambit of uh, the annoyance of the person of the president is extended to acts, all right? And um, not necessarily in the context of cyber, cyber crime. Mm. Now, number two, when you read the statement of Mr. Fred Enanga, the police spokesperson, he states, obviously, they say that the charge is going to be brought against Mr. Kableta will be in regards to offensive communication, which is under article, which is under section 25 of the Computer Misuse Act of 2011. But uh, I dare say that this, is, again, is being challenged. The Uganda Law Society earlier this year petitioned the Constitutional Court challenging the constitutionality of the of Section 25 of the Computer Misuse Act. Now, 
um, to that extent, there are still questions. The court has decided, but there are still questions about the legality of this section because it revives the archaic laws used by the colonialists to impede the freedom of expression. And again, often used by a, a, a state which seeks to muzzle. Now, did uh, Joseph Cabletta go beyond his limits? Um, what is the limitation of the freedom of expression? Exactly, Again. that is where we need to do. Did the cab later exceed the mm. limit that is actually set by calling the president a gambler? Let us first question the fact. Let us first question the statements that that he made. Were they statements of facts, or they were falsehood statements? Number one. Let me just even use the authority which is thrown at our faces. The police statement. They say he called the president a thief, a liar, and a gambler. Now. All those can be proven on different levels. Now, you guys are the ones in the newsroom. You're the ones who have compiled sta statements and you know about how the president way back has said that he will actually retire from power um, way back after 2000, I think, six. Has he retired? That's the question so of... So, whether he tells the truth or not. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Number two. If you call that, if you say that Mr. Cabletta insulted the president, I remember it must have been uh, at, the, at, the, at the helm of um, the 2016 presidential elections where Mr. Museveni um, deliberately insulted the members of the opposition, calling them all manner of names. It has always been his usual practice to actually insult members uh, of the public. I think the biggest, if you talk about annoying and insulting the public, I don't know of any person who was extremely offended. Now, that is my personal opinion. Who was personally and uh, explicitly um, annoyed the Ugandans like Mr. Museveni, never keeping promises, you know, and again, the statement of fact Mr. Cabletta cites in that article which is being used, the weekly rant, he says that um, the president has often used um, and prepared and has prepared his first son, um, Mr. Muhozi Kaine Rugaba, um, to take over the presidency. Now that can be, it's a question of whether it can be proved or not. Now obviously you are the journalist still, you have the cases of the raiding of the Daily Monitor when the Sejusa leaks came out about the Muhozi project. You've had people who have been arrested and even apparent murders of those who have come out to speak against the Muhozi project. Now, all those are statements of fact that can be, you know, brought to the table and we discuss them. Exactly. Now, we still, uh, we are still looking at that one. Mm -hmm. Even when uh, there are grounds you're giving that maybe the president has been a liar on certain instances, yes. but as well maybe gambling and so much more. Mm -hmm. But the question is, the fountain of honor is always protected. Let me yes. give you an example of what is uh, happening in the US. Mm -hmm. Robert Mora, who is the special counsel, was set up to investigate Donald Trump. He yes. says it is a long-standing st tradition mm -hmm. that the fountain of honor is actually mm -hmm. not I will, he will not indict President Trump mm. because he's a sitting president. Mm. So why does it, uh, Joseph Kavlita and mm. the people out there know that this is the fountain of honor who is protected? Mm. As much as we have complaints to make, mm. we must make them in a way that does not put the president in this tribute. I think, um, number one, being a fountain of honor requires you, you have an obligation to act honorably. Now, obviously, what yes, Mr. Uh, Senyonga, Council Senyonga is going to answer on that one. Let's go in for a short commercial break, and we'll do return. The day breaker continues. I see trees of green, red roses too, I see them bloom, for me and you, I, I see, see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do, they really saying, I love you, what a wonderful
Exactly, it is the daybreaker show that runs from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. for us as record television until you put some good in your morning by joining us for the daybreaker show. We are talking freedom of expression, and there is no better person to discuss that with us uh, apart from uh, Senyonga Council Simon. And the discussion is still going. We are like, if we are benchmarking all those laws that are quoted by Council Senyonga. We need to remind ourselves of what is happening in the perfect democracy. That is what people are saying. I gave him an example. President Donald Trump, who is not indicted because he's a sitting president and is protected as the fountain of honor. So I'm asking Comrade mm. Senyonga, shouldn't we copy and paste as well here in Uganda? Maybe mm. a lesson to Joseph Kablet, uh, Dr. Mm. Stella Nyans and others. Mm. I think um, uh, uh, you may not, uh, we may debate the question as to whether the U.S. is a, pub, is a perfect democracy yeah, or not. Obviously, there are a lot of contentions going on there, muzzling of human rights and all the likes. Now, is it a copy and paste? No, emphatically no. The, the nature of the democratic setup within the U.S. and uh, Uganda is quite different. The historical foundations are quite different. The applicability and development of the human rights has been quite different. And the challenges are quite different. And the contentions are quite different. Um, the people who want to challenge are quite different. Their reactions are quite different. Now, um, before we went off, you had asked a question about uh, about uh, the whether Kableta exceeding his limits, and you know what. Uh, did he go beyond the limit of mm -hmm. not looking at as much as, as the you, fountain of honor? Yes, exactly. Yes, and, and, and we left on the point where the question was, if Mr. Museveni is a fountain of honor, he has a legal obligation, legal and moral ethical obligation to act honorably. Now, obviously, both publicly and privately, he has often proved himself to be quite dishonorable. And again, that's a personal opinion subject to, you know, to only myself and whatever the public yeah. thinks, that's up to them. Now. Um, he has acted dishonorably on a couple of occasions. Um, the second thing that I want us to understand is that um, whereas the fountain of honor is protected, he is not above public scrutiny. The pub, the, the, Mr. Museveni is occupying the office of a president, which is a, of an office created by the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda. He is not above scrutiny. All right, and oftentimes he has been scrutinized. Why don't they people, why don't they put challenge when the public accounts committee goes before him, for example, to question about uh, the presidential handshake, about uh, the oil deals and all these things? There have been counter accusations and various accusations. You've seen ministers in China who have been implicated for giving bribes to Mr. Museveni. You've seen um, there have been various allegations made against the first family um, um, with the tinkering of the and tampering with uh, a lot of oil deals and a lot of other things. Um, now that's just the minimum we can say here beyond just uh, the accusations of the different kidnaps, uh, the different murders um, which have gone unquestioned. Do you want us again to question, for example, uh, why the government has never released the report of Dr. Kaira up, to, up till now? Why have they not accounted for the murders that happened during the two, 2000 and 2009 Buganda riots? Um, a lot of things that have happened. Now, all those put the government in question. But you see, um, that's where we have to build the premise of the discussion. Based on that, the president has to account to us. Now, Mr. Kableta goes ahead to state Look here, the government has government media, which could have come out to say this, whatever he said was not right, probably to bash it out, as opposed to arresting somebody. Not actually arresting, because arrest is a legal procedure. Now, what they did was not arresting, what they did was kidnapping. Now, kidnapping is actually an offense to the state. Arrest is a legal procedure. Now, they did follow the proper legal procedure, present, presenting arrest warrants. You know, Mr. Kableta had, had, uh, has individual rights before, during, and after um, his arrest. I can tell you as a matter of fact, as of yesterday, um, the wife of Mr. Kableta, uh, Miss, Mrs. Rebecca Kableta, and uh, his lead lawyer, Counsel Daniel Walimera, were at the Chireka police station where he's being detained, and they were denied access. Now, again, the government is continuously violating his human rights because at the bare minimum, you would have allowed his medical personnel, his close family member who is the wife, plus his, lead, his lawyer. Now, they haven't done any of those. They kidnapped him, they violated his human rights before, during, and after 
the arrest. As to whether it's going to be presented in court today, we're not yet sure and certain. Now, all those are matters of quotation now. But based on that, you don't expect us to, to still uh, have, uh, we, don't, we don't want to brush issues under the carpet that the president is a fountain owner. I'm not his political commentator, so I have to state things as they are. That is Council Simon Senyunga. The, discuss, Senyunga, the discussion is freedom of expression in Uganda uh, encroaching on peace of the president. Senyunga, yes, yes. I have put this one before you. Yes. I know the uh, conditions you're having about uh, J the arrest of uh, Mr. Kableta. Mm. But the question is, do you believe we need uh, controls over this freedom of expression, the enjoyment? Mm. That we, do you think we need uh, controls on the way we enjoy our freedom of expression? I think the freedom of expression, again, the constitution is clear. It's not an absolute right. There ought to be limitations. Now, any limitation has to be under under the ambits of the law. Let me just stop the person out there. Yeah, please. Now, there's a very big difference between a limitation of a human right and a derogation of a human right. So in other words, what was done to Kavleta was a derogation? Was a derogation of his human right, as opposed to a limitation of his human right. What justifies uh, the derogation you took? Um, what, number one, again, I've cited mm. instance, instances that one, the government did not act within the ambit of the law in the way the whole kidnap <laughs> or the arrest was made. All right. Number two, they haven't come out to, they haven't come out to, they haven't come out clean to, to, um, to counter the statements that Mr. Kableta made. He's a citizen of this nation, and he has a, he has a right to question the person of the president. Now, in questioning, it can be, it can probably be said that uh, he annoyed the person of the president. Um, the police say that he insulted the president. I don't think calling one a thief a gambler and a liar is actually an insult. It is just a statement of my opinion on factual basis. And it goes ahead in that article, let them not, it's not a, piece, a pick and choose. The article gives the facts very clearly. All right? The government has on various occasions actually um, come out and said, you know, they have, held, they have uh, come out clean on some of these aspects. You know? By the time General Sejusa um, came out to say the Muhozi project, because actually it's the whole, the, 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 the understory of all this is the questioning of the Muhozi project. Now, by the time General Sejusa came out to challenge this, he was a serving a public official, all right, an army officer. Let me zero it back to you. Would you feel offended if Stephen Mayombo out there comes and say Senyonga is a lifeless being, a person who do not have the brains and everything? What I, would you feel about that? Um, this is beyond my feelings. Mm. Again, it's uh, whether I've stated the facts or not. Now, there are various ways we have uh, expressed him so, ourselves, mm. all right? Um, for every one Joseph Kableta rant that you can give and is what you would call insults to the person of the president, I can cite for you 20 insults of the president, not only to the public, but also to individuals. Um, do you want me to say that, you know, at one of the, must have been the International Human Days where the president said, I am not a servant of you Ugandans, all right? And um, many times has used language which uh, seeks to to, to despise and to present people despitefully. You've seen him, for example, insulting lead, um, um, leaders in this nation, the Kabaka of Buganda, and now he has insulted. I've seen him on various occasions. Various politicians, especially those who do not agree with him, calling them fools, you know, despiteful people, not worthy. Again, the same Mr. Museveni, who is very angry with, uh, with Mr. Kableta, has often, all right, insulted even those who came in power before him, the likes of um, President Amin, President Obote. Now, the very things insulted President Obote and Amin for are the very things that he's being told right now. So because he called Mr. Obote a thief, he called him a liar. Um, uh, now, uh, I think... Uh, Do you believe in control, uh, Council Senior? I don't believe in control. I can, I can, we can discuss the limitation. We don't discuss control. Don't you think if uh, we leave it very free where everyone can speak whatever they want, in the end we'll lose the point of people expressing themselves without infringing on the rights of others? The question is not what they say. The question is that what they say actually annoys those who are in authority. Now, the Budapest Convention on Cybercrime, which has been the basis for NITA to, cre to, to create the, the three um, computer laws in 2011, Gives a, uh, gives a framework, an international legal framework, which actually seeks to respect international and fundamental human rights right for under international laws. Now, um, what you call a democratic state cannot be democratic when it's 
afraid of public scrutiny. And uh, that's what uh, the government is posturing out there, that they are afraid of public scrutiny. And their response, as usual, it's a knee-jerk response of arresting any critique of the state, and uh, one of them being uh, Mr. Kableta. You know, again, the same, the same uh, what I would call stupid law is used uh, to arrest uh, Dr. Stella Nyanzi for the way she expressed herself, and probably the way uh, Mr. Baju expressed himself. Yeah, but uh, I'm not acquainted very well with their facts, so I'll stick to Joseph. Now, as we are discussing Mr. Joseph Kabuleta's arrest and everything, uh, as a citizen, I also don't approve of the way uh, people are arrested without presenting the documents, uh, calling on them, explaining to them why they are being arrested, yes. or allowing uh, councils and everybody to access them. Mm. This is where we uh, discussions around that mm. public interest. Yes. Don't you think the president, being voted into power all these many years, mm. he has the power and approval of many Ugandans? Who, if you go ahead, mm. if you go ahead to keep on uh, uh, putting him in this uh, disrepute, mm. people can turn up against Kavleta. And so to protect Kavleta, public mm. interest, are they keep him behind bars? I think um, um, public interest is not judged on how many times you're elected in office. Mm. Because again, remember, there have been a couple of presidential petitions which have challenged the procedure and uh, the legality of uh, Mr. Museveni's, uh, um, Mr. Museveni's election. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so that cannot be a basis of whether he's the most liked person in Uganda. But we can, uh, again, respect him for occupying the office of the president, which we have given him, but he will not go beyond the public scrutiny. So again, what you say is very correct, that uh, because of their power, they would want to keep Mr. Kableta behind the bars. But for how long? You know, there are very many Kableta's out there. How many of them will you arrest? If, uh, I like what he said in the tweet that you can arrest one, but you cannot arrest all of us. Yeah. You cannot arrest one, but you cannot arrest all of us. But yes. others are warned. Police is issuing a warning. No, they're not warned. They're threatened. They're threatened. That was not a warning. It was a threat. The discussion is of freedom of expression in Uganda, encroaching on peace of the president. Senor, it, uh, the Computer Misuse Act has been quoted a number of times. Yes. What uh, clauses would you think should be removed from this Computer Misuse Act? Because it has been coming up on and on mm. in their areas. For example, Dr. Sera Nyanzi, mm. the same was used for Mr. Kavlet, and the same has been used for search warrants mm. for many journalists here in Uganda. I think, uh, again, I will agree with what the Uganda Law Society um, stated in their petition to the Constitutional Court. Section 24 of the Computer Misuse Act and Section 25, which, which uh, provide for the offensive communication. And uh, all these seek to muzzle, because that's the justification for their, why I would think they would be removed. They seek to muzzle uh, the freedom of expression insofar as they go beyond the, the ambit of limitation to the extent of derogation of this human right. So to that extent, they need to be struck out by the Constitutional Court. Now, obviously, given their contention, there is a tactic, a political tactic, which, as usual, the state uses to delay. Um, matters brought before the Constitutional Court, either by way of uh, threatening the judges who are sitting in these matters or by way of the delaying. Yet, actually, the Constitution provides for it must be, um, uh, must be at one of the, the provisions that, that creates the Constitutional Court, which states that um, constitutional petitions should be, should be heard in a timely manner and in an urgent manner. Now, uh, these are matters concerning derogation of human rights, which the Constitutional Court has to pronounce itself very clearly on. Perhaps the other strategy you could use is mounting pressure on the Constitutional Court to ensure that it pronounces itself as an angle of activism, which again is a fundamental human right in regards to freedom of expression. Now, Council Senyonga, as we've been, uh, the discussion has actually been going, yes. I've realized that you're not appreciating uh, the the other side of regulating or having control mm. on freedom of expression. Mm. So these are some of the benefits of freedom of expression. Yes. Helping in independent scrutiny, mm. active and informed democratic system, mm. help to expose evils of those in power. Mm. But and then, mm. but in the end, there is some aspects for everything that has an advantage. Mm. There must be a disadvantage to yes. it. Mm. What as according to you counsel Senyonga, mm. you see, as a disadvantage in people enjoying freedom of expression without having any limitation or any control. Now, obviously, there are a lot of uh, things that disagree that could come with uh, with that. Perhaps uh, 
One of them would be security issues, all right, uh, exposing uh, what would have been top secrets of the state. Um, maybe um, the other could be people running wayward in terms of their expressions, but again, that's a subjective standard. And uh, the disadvantages should not be measured based on what is likable by the state. But uh, what, is, uh, which, what is truly, what has been truly scrutinized, what has been truly put on table. Now, that's a matter that has to be taken to court. As now, we're Senyonga, going to court. we are coming back with that one, uh, the other side of freedom of expression yes. when we come back. Let's go in for a short commercial break. When we do return and uh, appreciation to all of those ones who are watching mm -hmm. on Facebook. Remember, you can join us on Facebook. That is at Record TV Uganda. I'm seeing many, very many people saying free cab later, uh, free Joseph cab later. Um, others, free Joseph, free, uh, section 24 and section 25, seek to muzzle the freedom of expression. That is Aaron Tamale, Karo Tugume, second, return Joseph cab later. And thank you to everyone out there who is watching Record Television. Trinvet is our brand and this is a daybreaker. Let's go in for a short commercial break. We return with Council uh, Simon. From 4 to 6, from 4 to 6, at 4 to 6 with Anderson. Chikunda is the name of the show. Entertainment to the climax. We're coming to pop. We'll demand them back up for with Andrew Anderson Luzet. On Record TV. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Enoy 97.7. Record your film to some hits all day. Wakati mutima gua kampala, we the best shows. Narutan can a huge breakfast show. Aka uwa, over kukumina bere, pakasonye zokumacha. The Hit Lab, omobezi, sawanya, pakamwende zomutondo. The Big Evening, ababa, sawamwenda, pakimu yaka wungeze. The Hot 7 at 7 countdown. Matubati the nyimbi singo kuja. The hottest and the biggest songs. When now ku 97.7. At the love at heart. The love what hard? Omo kwa no mumbeo. Itani kasa wabere. Paka msavu gwechiro. Late night. Kusubu wumi wa radio singe kedua 97.7. Record your film. Record your film. Record your film. To some la hits eh. All day. All day. Moses and the Ten Commandments. Four centuries of slavery. Do I know you? From the prince of Egypt to the hero of the Hebrew people. Moses, the chosen leader. Moses. God orders the end of the exploitation. The Pharaoh does not obey. Does your God have another message for me? Aaron, throw your staff on the ground. And the pestilence begins. The empire is destroyed. And liberation comes. The miracle of the Red Sea crossing. And the laws of God's people. 
a success already seen by over 15 million people throughout the world. Moses and the Ten Commandments on Record TV. You don't want to miss it. This case, the discussion is on freedom of expression in Uganda, but as well we are looking at encroaching on the peace of the president. You know the president is the fountain of honor. We are using the fountain of honor as an example because very many people have now been put before courts of law to answer for questions concerning their use of social media or new media in their communications that are said to be offensive. And the example we're using tonight is that one of Joseph Kabuleta and in studio we're having counsel uh, Simon Senyonga. Yes. Simon Senyonga, we are looking at the other side that it is important as much as we need freedom of expression to really flow, but there must be a control. And we're asking you, do you think that control is actually important? Um, that control, it's a, we need to have a balance of discussion here. But uh, again, I don't agree with the aspect of controlling of human rights. Limitation is agreeable. And uh, the government needs to have, uh, I'm sure they have some good lawyers out there who can uh, help them research more. On, they have the uh, attorney general. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah they have the attorney general's chambers. And I would expect that uh, they will not be hiding. Now, we have had, we are, I have cited for you a couple of cases which have been brought on the question of the freedom of expression. But uh, one of the contemporary issues which I've participated in concerning this, I was one of the um, the petitioners that went to the Constitutional Court challenging the over-the-top tax, the OTT. Um, and one of the one of the, the discussions there was the OTT seeks actually to limit the freedom of expression to the extent that it imposes a tax on um, low income earners, on people who run online businesses, on people who run, for example, online TV stations to express their opinions. So you muzzle a freedom of expression by imposing an unfair tax um, on the citizenry. So um, do you want to control again to that extent? You don't want to control because the counter argument there was that probably the OTT could bring in much more taxes to the state, but uh, that we haven't yet had a report that has scrutinized thoroughly the extent of the OTT um, in that regard. Um, at the different uh, platforms which have been provided for, you've realized that the, uh, the, the government has always come in to, 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 to control, again, this freedom. And one of those platforms is that, remember that Uganda, and the nature of its political system, it, is, um, it has different political parties. It's a multi-party democracy. Now, remember at the swearing in of the president in 2016, he clearly made a statement that he is going to crush all political parties. And you've seen him making efforts towards that end. All right? Either by intimidating, arresting those in the opposition, or bribing and buying off those in the... And you have very many classical examples who have been given ministerial positions. And uh, before, they were, they were, they were they, they, they publicly criticized the president. But now, they are, they are his bootlickers who are clapping and you know, singing praises for him. So that intimidation in regards to unfair taxes, um, controlling of the political spaces, mm -hmm. and uh, now intimidation of the citizenry who may come out to... to, 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 to to intimidate, to, to, to come to scrutinize and uh, challenge the standing of the government. 
Now can so senyonga. Yes. You realize Mr. Joseph Kableta is a preacher. Yes. Mm, people call him a soft style pastor. Mm. Don't you think which as, is wrong? Mm, but it's okay. Okay. <laughs> Don't you think uh, as a preacher he must look at um, uh, I usually tell people that there is um, oh uh, there is something called Aristotle's golden mean. Mm. There are two ends of the extreme. But mm. as a preacher who would have to strike a balance mm. as Aristotle calls for instead of going to the extreme of attacking the president mm. ranting and ranting. Don't mm. you think as a preacher he has got to do more than just one. I think you state Aristotle, and I think Aristotle was a fool. All right, and yes. uh, he was a fool in regards to the knowledge that I believe in. I am not mm. only a lawyer, but I'm a man of God. Mm. Now, obviously, the Christian standard. If you look at uh, the person, uh, the person of Jesus, mm. he was not a person who was just uh, a pleasant maker towards the state. Mm. He was a person who came out and called, for example, Herod when he was challenged about miracles. He told um, the guys who had come to him, "Go and tell, go and tell that fool." He called him a fox. He called the king, the president, a fox. Go and tell that fox, "I will continue performing these miracles." He went ahead to call the Pharisees, who are then the leading, the leaders of the church, what you would call like the archbishop of the Catholic church, the Anglican church, he told them your whitewashed tombs, they are empty and they are lifeless. So actually, Mr. Cabrita uses very good and uh, sweet biblical language to express his opinions. If they, if they actually knew the person of Jesus, the standard of the, you know, let me tell you something. Please. The standard of a preacher is not what the state you know, for so long, the state has wanted to bastardize and stupefy the context of uh, religious expression in regards to the political context. They want to set the agenda. You know, there's nothing as, um, there's nothing as, uh, as, uh, as unsanctified as the president of a nation going to church platforms to tell them what sort of gospel to preach. You know, he tells them preach the gospel of wealth creation. You've seen very many churches which, uh, which have, you've seen very many churches, all right, which have turned out to be government NGOs, all right, run by the state. Now, when you have, uh, when you have firebrand, when you have firebrand uh, preachers like Mr. Kableta coming out to challenge the status quo, they would rather you be like uh, some Anglican priest at All Saints or some pastor at Deliverance Church, you know, who is quiet, you know, saying good things about the state, about uh, the First Lady and, um, and, and uh, wanting to control the church and all the like. But Mr. Kableta, as a preacher, has actually set a very perfect biblical standard of what the apostles did to challenge the status quo. You are a, you are a Catholic, not so? Right. And right. I, uh, you've seen what Paul did when he appeared before the Sanhedrin Council, telling them that and you know, because some people would want to say, and obviously um, very shallow-minded, they would want to say that, uh, you know, why is he then running to the courts of law? When Paul was brought before the Sanhedrin Council, he said, number one, I am a citizen, and therefore I have particular legal entitlements. And uh, he, 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 he appealed to the leaders to have, to, to have mercy on him based on the law. Now, uh, Council Simon, you talk about the president actually giving, uh, uh, making a clear call to these uh, bishops, to these religious leaders, mm. to embrace the gospel of development, of operational wealth creation. Mm. Don't you think it is important that as much as we are looking at spiritual development, mm. the churches as well challenging to look at physical development as the president actually believes? Um, the, phys the, the physical development? Yes, let's say people. Like his are... physical walking day. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Not the, not the physical walking day, mm. but at least, like, let's say, economic development, uh, people get poverty alleviation, mm. uh, health standing, and so much, besides the spiritual. Mm. Is it important that uh, the church has embraced such a gospel? Life is spiritual. Everything has to be built on a spiritual foundation. Now, I can dare tell you this. Whatever the president goes on in the church, is saying about uh, whether they can set the agenda of the gospel is extremely unsanctified and um, very, 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 very unholy and unworthy of any serious discussion in regards to the church context. Now, the church ought to look at spiritual development in such a way of how does, you know, what does the Bible talk about wealth creation, for example? Mm. He says in 2 Chronicles 20, 20, believe the Lord your God and you will be established. Believe his prophets. So actually, the way of wealth, the transfer of wealth from, the, from, the, from God to the people he's honoring, he's anointed, the prophets of God. Now, number two, what does he talk about, uh, about uh, being in good health and all these things? He doesn't say that you go and jog. Actually, the Bible even gives a limitation to that. He says that, Physical exercise profiteth a little. And you know, spiritual exercise is what gives you a lot. 
All right, so next time you can have a, a deeper discussion of, you know, where we can have a national day of praying in tongues, you can have a national day of uh, honoring um, the prophet who the Lord has set in uh, this nation. Now, we are talking of freedom of expression, uh, encroaching on the peace of the president. What does such a president uh, leave Uganda as far as the international standing yeah. is concerned? Where I does it leave us as a nation? I think it gives us a very bad imagery. Number one, I would like to discuss that on three major platforms. On the international level, talking about Uganda and its existence on the global platform. Uganda has uh, legal obligations, as I clearly stated, under the Universal Declaration on Human Rights, International Convention on Civil and Political Rights, and again, the committee that that the committee under the, civil and, uh, the, under the International Committee on Civil Political Rights has gone ahead to state up the legal obligations of a state. Now, in the African context, we have the African Charter on Human and People's Rights, which states the freedom of exp with freedom of expression and the state obligation. Now, such a case doesn't, is not appealing um, when we discuss the international context. But finally, at the regional level, the East African community, moving towards integration, Uganda has to lead by example by ensuring that, number one, it opens up more internet space for people to express themselves without intimidating or frustrating their human internet rights. Internet space with OTT. Uh, yeah, obviously that's their reasoning. Unless otherwise, before we look at concluding the discussion of freedom of expression in Uganda, uh, most of the people online have been questioning whether some people are above the law mm. or not. What do you have to say? Don't you think some people are protected mm. under the law to be above? Yes, yeah, some people are protected. No, no, they are not actually protected. You see, when you read uh, Article 20 of the Constitution, it talks about the vertical and horizontal application of the human rights and uh, the state having an obligation to guard the citizenry, not to muzzle their freedoms. Now, um, some people use the law, they manipulate the law, uh, like what the state is currently doing, going under unconstitutional laws, to muzzle those, the, 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 the critiques of the regime. But also, number two, the political expediency of the state uh, to try to penetrate, especially the church and politics, specifically the case of Joseph Kableta, where he has come out to criticize the acts of the first family, the question of the president, and the way he runs the state, as they actually calls it a camp, you know, he calls it Uganda Company Limited as opposed to Uganda belonging to the Ugandans. And perhaps that's why Joseph should be released, so that he can return Ugandans, Uganda to the Ugandans um, and take it from being a company limited by guarantee. Exactly. I want to check on people who have been actually uh, watching. Uh, Councillor Christine Rachel, thank you. I said don't reduce our humidity to weakness. Ivan Sereve, uh, Damali Kent, how can a president tell the church what to teach? His repeats itself. Uh, with LCR. And thank you to everyone who has been actually watching. As we are wrapping up, uh, Council Senyonga has only 20 seconds to give up a final wrap up as we conclude today's day break. All right, uh, where is the camera? Here right here. Camera. Um, I, I just want to make an appeal to the, um, to the government, to the president, to come out clean, to check his conscience, to understand that um, when he was voted in power, he did not rise above public scrutiny. Um, being intimidated by those who put you in power is one of the biggest weaknesses that you can ever make as a leader. The government can no longer come out to bury their heads under the sand to think that whatever they are doing is uh, clean. Um, it is for your own good that you actually release Joseph Kableta. Otherwise, tables are actually turning and the touching of the anointed of the Lord, like Joseph Kableta, could be marking the end of your regime, which is very dangerous. Honor the prophets in the land, honor the prophet in the land, and do not touch any of his sons. That's my advice to you. That is the message from Council Isaac uh, Simon Senyonga. But unless otherwise, this is a daybreaker show that runs from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Always tell people, put some good in your morning by actually joining us. We run Monday to Friday. You could as well catch the stream on Facebook. It, always, it will always stay there. But unless otherwise, if you have a comment or feedback to give, let it come, let it keep flowing, let the discussion continue. Because the discussion continues here at Rico Television. Trinvet is our brand. My name is Stephen Mayombwe. Good morning.
Networking your business across Africa, well, it's had its problems. But no more. Because now, Liquid Telecom's single network connects you to more of Africa.